Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series. So today, uh, we are going to uh, share with you one uh, special topic. So uh, before we begin, so I want to ask about you. How are you doing? Are you doing good? So I hope you are doing uh, quite well and fine. So today, our topic is a quantitative model for FCPO and FKLI spread trading strategies. So this LLF webinar series is actually brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and in collaboration with our company, Excellent. And this webinar will be starting from 8.30 to 10. Uh, my name is CY Song. I will be your moderator for this session. And today we will be having Alex Seal and he will be sharing with you an informative topic about using the quantitative model for uh, FCPU and FKLI spread trading strategy. Now, besides, uh, most of you uh, would be very, very familiar with, you know, you can use fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis to trade the market, right? And uh, there is another method of trading, and that is called uh, the quantitative analysis method of trading. So I just want to give you all uh, a heads up as today's topic is an advanced topic. So today's session, uh, if you don't understand it at the first time, and it's okay, right? Uh, just keep an open mind to learn and explore new methods of uh, trading the market. Now, before we begin, if you are able to hear me, type in OK or uh, yes in the chat box or uh, give us a thumbs up so that I can uh, know that you are able to hear us clearly. All right, fine. Uh, you can also adjust your uh, volume so that it is uh, audible and you can listen to uh, more voice clearly. Ready? Good to go? All right. Now. As you know that currently we are still in MCO, right? And most people will be at home surfing the internet. And that is where uh, there is a lot of high traffic and congestion in our internet connection. So uh, to ensure you are able to enjoy the smoothest and highest quality video possible, please turn off your video camera and you can, so that you are able to enjoy a smooth video and have a good learning experience. Now, our session today will be divided into two sessions. Uh, the first session will be presented by Alex and uh, follow it up by the second session. Uh, we will be opening up for the Q&A session. So if you have any questions along the way, you can type in your questions in the uh, Q&A box and we will uh, answer your questions later during the Q&A session. So remember along the way, if you have any questions, uh, remember to type your question in the Q&A box and make sure it is sent to all co-hosts and I can only grab your question in the Q&A box, right? Because there may be a lot of conversations in the chat box and I may not be able to see your questions. So, as this LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series is brought to you by Busan Malaysia, we have several upcoming topics that will be presented to you. And every Tuesday, we will be having this LLF webinar uh, which will be conducted in three languages, English, Malay, and Mandarin. So if you are currently trading the Malaysia futures, then uh, this would be right for you. Or even if you would want to, you know, add futures product into your portfolio, uh, this LLF uh, webinar is definitely right for you, where our speakers uh, will be sharing with you insightful uh, knowledge as well as uh, practical uh, strategies and experience on futures trading. Uh, there are still more content packed and informative topics lining up and we will be uh, adding uh, these into our list. So if you're interested in any topic and want to improve your knowledge and skills on uh, futures trading, you can scan on the QR code and register yourself and make sure to add it into your calendar so that you don't miss any of the sessions. And one more thing is that beside the LLF uh, webinar series, we also have the LLF online workshop. And this online workshop uh, are for those who are serious in uh, getting started in their futures trading. And in this workshop, uh, we will be covering a full set of uh, beginner's knowledge uh, in futures trading that are important and essential for you. So it is a step-by-step -step guide to enable you to kickstart your first futures contract. So each session is uh, three hours. 
So for those of you who are really serious in kickstart your futures trading, then uh, the workshop is definitely right for you because each workshop is only limited to the first 50 online attendees. So listen carefully, eh? it is only for the first 50 online attendees. So make sure you really have the intention to kickstart your futures trading, then only you register for it, okay? Now, let me introduce our speaker today. Uh, he na his name is Alex Siu. Uh, Alex is the first chairman of uh, Malaysia chapter of CMT Association. He has extensive experience in the fund management and formerly he served as a fund manager in a VCB Capital, a boutique asset management company for uh, more than five years. And currently, uh, Alex is the fund director of uh, SC Licensed Robo Advisory Firm, uh, which is the BH Global Fintech Solutions. So he specializes in trading systems and strategies, uh, value investing, trading psychology, as well as uh, designing, developing, and programming of a machine learning algorithm for robo advisory. So without further ado, let me pass the presentation to Alex and uh, enjoy your learning. Okay, thank you, so. Uh, let me be able to share. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay, hope everyone can see. All right, uh, welcome, good evening, everyone. Yeah, uh, this is my second time sharing for BUSA sessions, All right? I'm still quite new here. Uh, I've been sharing for uh, CP sessions uh, for SC for I think over seven years now. So uh, this topic, uh, FCPO, is definitely not the topic that I would say I'm a specialist in because I do know many uh, specialists in FCPO who are doing really well, okay? So, but what I can uh, contribute, I think, uh, in this um, MCO time, the most important is we support each other, yeah? And we have fun learning while we are under MCO and we keep on the spirit up and also explore maybe new learnings, all right? So we don't have to be limited by the distance that we can travel, but rather our mind can travel globally and also to learn new things. And uh, we can help each other to go through this tough time together. I think that is very important because humans are social animal. And one way we can spend uh, so-called virtually social is that we can learn things together. Okay, all right. So I hope everyone is doing well. How many of you have uh, attended my topics or talk before? Can you put a one on the chat? If you have not put a two, Please, thank you. Okay, because I just want to see, uh, have you all uh, attended my topic before? You know my style and uh, how detailed or depth that I can go into. Yeah, so I see a lot of tools there. So it's your first time with me and uh, uh, Normally, the feedback is that I talk too deep, I talk too fast, and catch no ball. Okay, these are the common feedbacks lah, yeah, in the CP sessions. So uh, the previous session for the first time I speak for Pusa is on the machine learning for FKLI. So that topic, the feedback was, is a bit too deep. So it's okay if you don't really understand, but I just hope you keep an open mind because learning is fun. Yeah, and uh, trading is fun. So even though you don't really catch 100% of what I say, it does not matter. And there are also many other uh, topics and classes that you can go through, all right, and have fun learning. So uh, if you don't understand and you're really, really keen on what I, what, I, uh, what I was saying, you can always type in the chat box there and I will answer you during the break times, okay? All right, so um, let me just give you a, a, a a big picture of uh, why am I sharing this today? Uh, the answer is because, well, you all can see that I came from a technical analysis background. CMT is very much technical analysis. And 20 years in technical, I would say that uh, that is a time where you feel that definitely there is more to it than lines and graph and charts. Yeah? So uh, it's true enough. Fundamental and technical are not the only two ways to analyze 
the markets. Uh, no matter which market you're looking at, you can be looking at commodities uh, like FCPO, soya bean, gold, silver, or you can be looking at uh, indexes, okay, like FKLI, NASDAQ index, S&P index, okay, all the global indices, Hang Seng, Nikkei, okay, and you could be also looking at stocks. There's definitely not just two ways of looking at things. In fact, uh, to my knowledge, there are four ways, okay? So other than fundamental and technical, they are also quantitative, okay? And there is also sentimental. Sentimental means that you can measure and quantify uh, the sentiment of the market, uh, maybe through news. So it's talking about computer able to read news through MRN, machine readable news. And uh, you can also have a robot that can uh, detect the tones of, uh, let's say, Joe Jay Powell speaking. Uh, uh, is he nervous? Is he confident? That sort of things. That's sentimental analysis. Measuring market sentiment and convert it into technical indicators. That's very fun. And I, I have other topics on that. Okay, not this topic. Right, but uh, today I'm going to talk about quantitative, which is also very fun and is slightly different from technical analysis in the sense is that it's more of a science than an art, whereas technical analysis is more of an art than a science. So there's always been a debate and a question to me, uh, what's the difference between quantitative and technical? And my very simple answer is when it comes to uh, uh, technical analysis, the same chart if you ask 100 people, they can give you 100 different answers. So to me, that is art. And if you have an experiment, like a school science experiment, that when you repeat the experiments, it comes to the same conclusion, then 100 people repeat that experiment and can come to a very similar conclusion. And then that is a science. And that to me is quantitative analysis. So the difference between quantitative and technical is uh, technical is more of an art, quantitative is more of science because it can it's repeatable and it has steps that can have uh, some mathematics uh, background to back up the theory. Okay, so that's the background, the big picture behind what I'm sharing today. So my encouragement to everyone is that if you are bored, okay, with uh, fundamental, you know, sometimes too much news, right, too many rumors and stuff like that, and if you're bored with technical, you already very familiar if you're an advanced trader. You're already very familiar with your favorite tools like stochastics, RSI, Bollinger Bands, uh, or moving average. Then it's time for you to explore something new and enjoy learning something new, especially during this MCO time. Okay, so I'll just give you a brief picture of the big picture of what I'm doing today. So I just not to teach you a FCPO strategy that can make you a lot of money. Rather, I just want to share alternative ways or dimensions to look at things so that trading can be fun and learning how to trade can be fun and it's not just about graph and stuff like that okay right so the first thing i want to share about is the basic understanding of quantitative modeling okay right quantitative model means that you want to create a model that have certain prediction value that it can predict something or is able to measure something. So that's called a quantitative model. So to build a model, you need data, you need input. Okay, model is the output. You came up with a model, but to do this model, to create this model, you need input and input is data. So uh, most of the technical analysis tools like Bollinger Bands, Stochastics, Moving Average, those tools are before 1990s, yeah? like. Uh, Bollinger Band is 1970, um, MACD is 1965, Moving Average is 1950, and also um, Stochastic is 1970. So all these are pre-1990s tools. The main input is price. Okay, the main input is price. All right. But they are more than price when it comes to input. So there is a saying, I think everyone knows the saying, it's called GIGO. Okay, Gigo means garbage in, garbage out. So if you only have price, your model will be limited to a certain extent. Okay, but it means only the price of the asset that you trade. Okay, but if you have also the price of other assets that you do not trade, or you have something more than price, like for example, you can have volume as an input, you can have news as an input, 
you can have satellite images at the input. Okay, so there are some uh, because I was as a fund manager in Singapore for about a few years, so I do know some of the fund managers all around the world in Singapore where there are uh, crude oil fund managers who actually use satellite technology to actually keep track of all the container ships that move around the world so they know exactly when the container ships are going to arrive at the port, how many ships actually sank in the sea and the big data driven algorithm will tell them how this will impact on the crude oil price and can real-time calculate how the price will fluctuate based on real-time satellite uh, tracking of all the uh, crude oil ship containers ships okay so that's actually something very very interesting all right so this can be the input to a model not necessarily just price and price alone okay price is just one dimension so i'm talking about different input dimensions will decide how multi-dimensional your model could be okay but today i won't be talking about something so advanced okay uh, it's very interesting to explore but i'll just be sharing with you the basic of quantitative modeling using a few prices rather than just one price okay as a as a one dimension to, to build a model so as you can see this is the latest uh, fcpo chart um, for the october contract right and it's a uh, down and then it's up so of course technical analysis is that it's a history right it's on the left side of the chart but what you want to predict is the right side so does this chart has any predictive value at all uh, it's always arguable how predictive is this chart? How much can you predict out of this chart? But all we can see is this chart. So uh, there's definitely more than that. More, more than just looking at the chart and drawing lines and support and resistance and trend line. There's definitely more than that. So I'm just going to share with you something that is entirely different from what you see in this chart today. Okay. So to do that, we need some data. Okay. So how to get data? Of course, the best is get from a paid source so that the data is reliable okay so what are the paid sources you can get from bloomberg you can get from busa station that's the uh, venues where you have reliable data but they are not free so if you want free data for static analysis means that it's not real time but you can build these models while you just have some historical data you can also build a model it's static but it's okay you can get from let's say investing.com yeah you can get some uh, fcpo data all right you can get it from there. You just go to the website, right, investing.com, or you can go to Yahoo Finance or Google Finance or whatever. There are many places where you can get free data of FCPO, right? And you can just go to historical, all right? Uh, click the period that you want. Okay, there's one uh, important part here is that if you want to create a good model, your input historical data shouldn't be too little. So. Quantitative analysis actually follows a lot of. Okay, oh, some of my friends sorry just messaged me. Uh, uh, well, asked me to come back there, keep it up because they are watching. That's interesting. Uh, very nice of them. So as they say, we are social animals. We need each other's support. Okay, okay, right. So some of the data uh, is yes. Uh, Alex, uh, allow me to interrupt you a yeah. while. Uh, can you close out the some of the pop up box as it uh it come my site? Uh, we see some gray boxes that may uh, block the present. Ah, yeah, that's that would be good. Okay. Okay. All right. It's blocking okay, the better. presentation. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Good. Thanks for telling me because in Webex it does, in Zoom it does not. So I do not know that it blocked. Thanks for reminding me. So okay. Right. So okay. So let's not block the screen. Okay, so this is one area where you can get uh, historical data, okay, uh, FCPO, you can get it from investing.com, okay, right, you can click here, download data. Uh, what I uh, said just now is that the historical data need to be of a certain amount so that the quantitative models are reliable. If the data is less than uh, statistics, okay, because quantitative modeling follows a lot of statistics, okay, so statistic principle. So if the data is less than what is considered statistically non-significant sample size, okay? Uh, it varies, but uh, let's just have a rule of thumb, a ballpark figure is that it should not be less than at least, okay, uh, 100 uh, sample size data, because I do know that sometimes some of you do not have a way to get free FCPO data of different months, okay? So minimum at least is 100. The best is you can get between 300 to 500 data, historical data, that is good enough to build a, a good a model 
Okay, right. So here you can have put in your uh, time uh, range here uh, from what date to what date is a day data. The time frame is daily, means every one row is one day's closing price. Okay, end of day closing price. Uh, at least have uh, 100. The best is have about 500 data. Then you click download. You will be able to get the data downloaded okay to your computer right so from here you are able to open it up this data normally is in csv file okay in excel file you can open it up using excel and that's what you see okay for example i download and collect all the data of different months of fcpo so it's august september october november december months okay and i collect all this data and i can put all into one excel all right so that's is what you can do arrange the data nicely that is actually the steps on what we call a uh, preparation data preparation step all right okay so for more reliable data i would say go to a click data source like busa station you'll be able to have more accurate and reliable data you won't have many missing data because i did try to download from investing.com i realized that they are missing data and there's nothing you can do about it because it's free source right they are not obligated to give you very reliable data so if you download from uh, Busa station, the data will be a lot more reliable and they won't be missing data. So you go to this uh, symbol called FCPO, CC under, uh, dash futures, it means that it's the continuous contract so that you can get the historical data. Go to click historical price, okay, highlight all the data there, okay, inside the Busa station, the historical price, that's what you can do, and then you can paste them, uh, paste as value, okay, paste special, paste as value into and Excel. That's how you can get the data to Excel from Busa Station. Okay, so here you have uh, open, high, low, close, volume, open interest. So if you want to arrange nicely like what I did just now, you all you need is just to extract the closing value here. Okay, and let's say this is a, a September contract. So you just change the word from close to September and then you extract again, do the same thing for October and then you change the close to October. And then you extract the same thing for November, and then you extract the same thing for December, and this is what you can get, something like this. Okay, so it's extracting a one file by one file and combining the closing price of all different calendar months together, and you put it nicely and arrange nicely. This is part of data preparation. Okay, all right. So that's what you can do. Okay, so next in Excel already, are we going to analyze in Excel? Of course not, because Excel lacks statistical tools to analyze and to build model. Okay, so definitely you can create indicators, okay, from these files, or you can build models, but not in Excel. So it has to be exported to somewhere, some other software to build your model or to build your indicators. Like for example, you want to build a specialized indicator that is your own idea, that is not available in all the brokers platform okay you want to have your own customized indicator you can actually build it in mt4 okay meta trader 4 all right mt4 is a free platform that you can download from internet uh, a lot of people thought that mt4 has to do with forex which is not it's because forex brokers use mt4 as their platform but mt4 is actually a free platform for retail traders that you can actually use the mt4 platform for free to program your own indicator and the key question is then how do you export import this fcpo data into mt4 that's the step that a lot of people are not aware okay so this is how you can do it okay you can actually go to any of the mt4 you download from internet right just run the mt4 the meta trader 4 and you just go to any of the symbol because we are not going to use any symbol there just mt1 symbol clean everything and what you can do is that you can actually import the data from that Excel file just now that we downloaded. Yeah, remember this file that we download from Busa Station or from investing.com, yeah? And then we arrange the file nicely, right? And like, like August, September, uh, November, all this, okay? Uh, that's what we did. That is actually for modeling, okay? But what you need to do if you want to import into MT4 is that you don't have to do this step. What you need to do is that you must have the open, high, low, close, okay? And volume, right? You need this 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 uh this uh, excel you can directly put into mt4 and you can populate the data after you clean that uh, any symbol you populate it with this excel data and then you can see fcpo price appearing the chart appearing in mt4 and from here you can actually 
create new indicators with this data, or you can apply your own customized indicator to back test, see whether the indicator works or not, okay, on FCPO data. That's how you can do it in MT4. Other than FCPO data, you can also import Malaysian stocks into MT4 or Malaysian or PLCI futures into it, and you can do back testing in MT4, okay? So that's one very simple way, which is free of charge that you can actually do to create your own customized indicator, okay? So if you want to import into MT4, what you need to do, I just repeat one more time, is you need to have this type of uh, uh, setup or structure uh, the, in Excel, date, open, high, low, close, volume. If you do not know the structure exactly, very simple, just look at MT4's uh, structure and you follow exactly the columns and you'll be able to import successfully. Uh, you might have a few challenges in the beginning, but after a while, it should be okay. Okay, so then you can, once the data is inside MP4, then you can do your uh, customization of indicators in MP4. That's one free way of doing things. Okay, but that's not what we're going to talk, to talk today is how to create a customized indicator, but rather we want to talk about how to build a quantitative model for FCPO. So that is what we are going to do is we're going to do it in MATLAB. Okay, there are a few softwares that can do this. One is MATLAB, M-A-T-L-A-P, okay, MATLAB. Okay, uh, MATLAB is quite an expensive software. You can buy it online or you can download the free trial version to actually uh, use it. Uh, if you, or you can have a student version, which is much cheaper, right? And of course, we are Malaysian. I do know that there are some other places in Malaysia that sell MATLAB cheaper. So I'm not going to name those places. You can go and find. But MATLAB is one of the ways you can do build a model using the data from Excel. Okay, other than MATLAB, you can also use like IBM's SPSS, you can use eViews, okay, Stata, okay, and uh, a few others, okay, right, Minitab and all those. These are all the statistics software that you can build uh, quantitative models of FCPO. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, explain about MATLAB and introduce you to MATLAB today. All right, okay, so what you can do here in MATLAB is that you can go to the import data in MATLAB, okay, you import the data from Excel, like just now you save as a XLS format, the Excel format, or you can save as the CSV format, right? The comma, the separate value format into Excel, and then you can import this Excel into MATLAB. That's what you can do. You can just click here, import data, okay? Go and find the file, and this file, what is this file? This file is the one that I showed you earlier, the September, October, November, the uh, arranged nicely already, okay? Every column is one month's data for, different month's data for FCPO, and that is what the file is about. You find the spread data file, and then you go to uh, import, output type, change to column vectors. From table, change to column vectors. Then you'll be able to extract each column separately as a variable, okay? As a variable, and then click import selection. And what will happen is that the imported data will appear in the workspace of MATLAB as data set, okay, data set. So it become every single column become a variable, become a data set. All right, so this spread data will appear here. Each month is a time series, okay, it's a time series data set. All right, this is your raw data to build a model in MATLAB. All right, so these are the steps. These are the steps, okay. So that is step by step, how to prepare the data and how to import, extract the data from somewhere, okay, and how to put the data to, to the uh, software, all right, like a MATLAB software or SPSS software or eView software, or you can put into MT4 software, okay? So these are the exact steps. So those of you who come to my class before, you know that I'm quite uh, technical in details in describing how the things are being done, okay? All right, next question, next uh, topic is after you prepare the data well and you already import the data, Next, we want to explore uh, what should we do with the data, right? After you put into a statistics survey, what's next? That's actually the more important uh, question to ask. Quantitative concepts, okay? Quantitative concepts. This is what I'm going to spend a majority of today's time on, okay? I'm going to finish this talk at 9.30 and then we are going to open for uh, discussion, yeah? So I have another half an hour. So I will just want to focus on just one step so that I will not confuse everyone because I'm just going to share one method today, which I think is useful. I've tested it with, with real account and it works uh, in, in, the, in, the, in my testing period. I'm just, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to work because that is not uh, into the future because past result is no uh, guarantee of future performance, but I'm just sharing with you new ideas. That's what today's topic is about and let you explore 
interesting ways of uh, doing SEPO trading. Okay, so the concept here is this is a simple concept. Okay, we are going to test if any two calendar months data have some form of relationship, has some form of relationship. Okay, right, and this is the test. The name of this test is called CADF. Okay, sometimes when you find a lingo, like come across a lingo where it's very deep or you've never seen before, don't have to be afraid because what you need to find out is what does this test do? Don't be intimidated by a very complex name. Like for example, CADF stands for co-integration augmented Dickey Fuller test. So, oh, this is so difficult. I'm not going to learn it. You know, don't think that way because, uh, those uh, uh, confusing or bombastic names are just uh, statisticians of a way to you know make them think their things feel very cool. But what's important is what does this thing do? So you have to ask yourself. So what does this thing do? Is it's going to measure relationship of uh, two or more uh, calendar months data. Okay, that's what it does. So I have an example here. I have an example here. If you put the August and September month, September month these two data, and we use this test to measure their relationship, what we are going to try to do is we are going to see, are these two September and August month data, are these two data, we call it Y and X, are these two data co-integrated? Okay, I'm going to show you some comics later, what does it mean by co-integration so that you understand better. But, but this concept of co-integration is very important, means that does it exhibit mean reversion properties, okay? Because why? This is needed for this strategy to work. If this doesn't happen, the strategy is going to fail. But that's the reason why uh, sometimes spread trading does not make money. Sometimes spread trading, when a spread, spread care too much, not necessarily spread trading will always win. Sometimes you lose as well. The reason is because uh, sometimes the spread traders do not measure the co-integration properties before they enter a spread trade. That is actually one of the reasons why, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why. So it's very important before you enter a spread contract, means you buy one month and sell the other month, you do a calendar spread. It's important to actually measure the co-integration value, which is the CADF test. Okay, what does this test do? Okay, let me just put into a more detail. What does this test do? Okay. This test, as you can see here, okay, let's know whether it's a spread or is it butterfly. As you can see here, let's look at the number first, okay. The number here is very important and the key is the more negative, the better, okay. The more negative means that they are very, very well co-integrated. It means that they have a very strong relationship. It means they are going to mean revert. It means they are going to come back to each other. Uh, imagine this as husband and wife, okay. Co-integration is a relationship like a husband and wife. Correlation, as most of you know, correlation is a relationship like a boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Correlationship, uh, correlation can break off anytime, like girlfriend, boyfriend can break off anytime. But husband and wife relationship is stronger. That is co-integration. Means that even though they are far apart, eventually they will come back to each other together. So imagine that way. That'll be easier for you to understand this concept. Co-integration is like husband and wife relationship. Correlation is like boyfriend girlfriend, which is easier to break off. Okay, imagine that way. So the more negative, the stronger is the bonding between these two contracts. Okay, so here are three values here. You can see there's a one percent, there's a five percent, and there's a ten percent. Okay, all right. Ten percent tells you that if the measured CADF value of these two calendar month, September month and August month. Okay, let's say these two month. If it's uh, let's say negative 4.3, and then the 10% critical value is negative 3, and negative 4.3 is more negative than negative 3, the more negative, the better. Yeah, remember this, right? If it's more negative than negative 3.089, that's the threshold point, means that there is 90% chance these two calendar month data or price are going to be revert. They are going to come back to each other. That is how spread trading makes money. Yeah? And that is actually have 90% chance of happening. If this value is more negative than the 5%, negative 3.4, which uh, very clearly this value is more negative than 3.4, negative 3.4.36 is more negative than negative 3.4, correct? 
Yeah, that means that there is 95% chance that August and September not are going to mean revert to, to each other. So there's 95% chance of success of this strategy. If this CADF value is even more negative than the 1% critical value, which is negative 4.029, that means there's 99% chance these two price are going to mean revert, come back to each other, and there's 99% chance of success in that trade. Okay, so that is actually very, very important to take note of that. Okay, so that is the meaning of 1995-99% of confident interval. All right, let's go back to our original uh, August-September month uh, example. You can see that the value here is negative 3.88668. Okay, that is for August-September month for integration value. It means that that is at least 10% or 90% chance is going to mean revert. It is more than negative 3.4. That means that there is at least 95% chance it's going to mean revert, but it is less than negative 4.025. That means that it's not as high as 99%, just only up to 95% chance of mean revert, but not more than 99% chance. But it's actually good enough. If there's 95% chance of success, I think as traders, we would take the trade. Okay, that is a that is for a calendar spread. Okay, that's our spread. But here, the second example that i showed just now all this value right is for a butterfly means the co-integration property of two spread set op spread versus offset spread okay these two spread or any other two calendar month spread combine together to form a butterfly spread so some of you who are traders uh, who trade fcpo you know what is a butterfly spread so before you enter a butterfly spread of four legs okay measure this cadf if the value is more than normally is higher than the CFDF value for a spread for a butterfly is normally higher means that there's higher chance of mean reversion means there's higher chance of making money so those of you know that you maybe will make less but it's a more reliable uh, profit uh, potential when you do a butterfly right so that is actually higher chance so this is a butterfly's CFDF value whereas this is a, a, a spread uh, two spread calendar spreads uh, CADN value. Okay, so if I hope you understand uh, that if you are if you are a trader, this will hit as the main point that you are missing out in your strategy. If you are not a trader, uh, this might sound too complicated to you. To you, it's okay, right? But remember it because next time when you reach a certain stage, you will realize that oh, this is the key that I've been missing out. Okay, you will have that actually a uh, realization at a certain point of your journey. Okay, next, what is co-integration? What is CADF? I'm going to show you uh, something more, uh, at more, more detail so that you, I, that's why I told you the whole topic, I'm just going to focus on one concept because the strategy only need one concept to work, which is co-integration concept to work for this whole strategy, okay? So to understand co-integration, you need to understand the concept of stationarity. What is stationary and non-stationary, okay? Let's open it up. This is the normal, December month, uh, non-stationary normal price. Okay, price is a uh, trendy, and you can see this is non-stationary. When it's non-stationary, you cannot use it for technical statistical analysis. It's useless. You need to make the data stationary first. Means you need to remove the unit roots. Uh, all these are very bombastic words. You don't have to understand. You just need to know that you need to do something to the price data. If not, price is itself is not useful. Okay, so you. Do certain things in e-view that's what you can do to prepare the data okay so that you can do one level difference here if you don't do it in e view it's very simple you can also do it in excel so what you need to do in excel is that uh, i will maybe i'll show later right that you just have to do use today's price minus yesterday's price divided by yesterday's price so how many percent change so you are talking about periodic return that will achieve the same effect of this but what you do in e view one level difference you make the data stationary so what you see is on the left hand side is the original non-stationary december data what you see on the right hand side is already after you're doing the first level difference or after you process the data the data becomes stationary you can see it revert okay it mean revert around the central mean of zero and this data is what is useful to build a model the data on the left is not useful the data on the right is useful to build a statistical model or quantity model okay so stationarity is very important all right okay the variance okay is a square value or standard deviation which represent volatility and they do not change over time that is called stationarity okay consider two prices both non-stationary okay right these two prices is uh, let's say for example 
uh, September month and August month or October month and November month. These two are both non-stationary, their original price. But if you combine these two price together using a certain uh, equation, okay, they may actually become stationary and co-integrated. Okay, if, even though these two prices are not stationary, if you combine them together, and they might be co-integrated, even though two prices are not stationary. So that is the part, this is the concept that is hard to understand. So I'm going to use a comic so that you understand. Okay, let me show you this comic. Okay, consider a drunken man and his dog. Okay, the drunken man's walking steps are quite random, just like an FCPO price, they are random walks. So they, and so are his dog's walking steps, also quite random. Two of their steps are quite random. Okay, so by right, both the drunken man and the dog's uh, steps, the way they walk, are random. They are non-stationary, okay? But as the dog stick close to his master throughout, through his hearing and smell, even though on its own, the man walk in a random manner, the dog also seemingly walk in a random manner, but the distance between the drunken man and the dog is relatively constant. The distance do not deviate far away from each other because why? The dog through hearing and smell stick close to its master, so it doesn't deviate too far away. Thus, we can say that even though the drunken man's walking is random, but the distance or the spread between the man and the dog is pretty stationary. We say that their walking paths are considered to be co-integrated. They are coping, even though each one is walking randomly, they are non-stationary, but because they stick close to each other, they have a certain pattern of moving together. So we can say that their walking paths are considered to be co-integrated. And if that is the case, you can do a calendar spread strategy on that, based on that. That is co-integration, okay? So I'm not going to spend too much time into explaining the rocket science of co-integration. I have a few topics here. Okay, but okay, there's there's a lot of rocket science here, so I'm not gonna explain, but I hope you understand the concept. The concept is two two price data are not stationary, but if you combine them with an equation, they may actually have a stationary pattern because the two non-stationary price stick to each other at a certain distance and they move at a certain uh consistent pattern together. That is called stationarity. Okay, right. So if the FCPO data are stationary or non, is it co-integrated or non-co-integrated? Before we do this strategy, we have to test first if the calendar spread months data, if they have this property. If they are co-integrated, then we can do this strategy. If they are not, uh, the strategy is not going to work, okay? So how to measure it? We can use Johansson's co-integration test, okay? That is actually what we did earlier like, in uh, MATLAB, but you can also do it in, in uh, eView. The same thing, but you're doing it in eView in a different way. So you can see from here that it's proven using Johansson's co-integration test in eView, that they are co-integrated, of at least two pairs are co-integrated. You can prove, that's why I say it's a science point here, because every time you repeat the experiment, you come to the same conclusion. You can say that, oh, we are all looking at different things, interpreting different things from the same thing. You, we will all come to almost the same conclusion. That's why it's a science, it's not an art, okay? So you can see that uh, if the FCPO data have co-integration, okay, and the p-value, you can see the p-value here, is less than 0 0.05, then we can say that this is significant enough to reject the null hypothesis. There is co-integration between these two calendar months data. Then we can do this, okay? So you can do the same thing in, um, in MATLAB, okay? Run the code of uh, co-integration, and this is what you get, okay? Whatever you see earlier that I tried to explain to you, step by step, this is how you derive that result, okay? Of course, uh, you might not be able to catch everything because I'm explaining too fast because of the lack of time, but do explore this method. There are a lot of resources online that you can just search. You just have to Google uh, CADF method to find uh, co-integration, or you can just have to search uh, MATLAB's uh, software, how to do co-integration. You know, just Google some keywords like this, you'll be able to find step by step. Okay, so compare the result with the benchmark and you can see how co-integrated they are. If they are co-integrated, then you can do this strategy. You can do this strategy, okay? So from here, I'm just going to explain to you that there are different types of spread trading, okay? There are commodity spread trading, okay? Intermarket means that you are actually selling one market and buying the other market. That's not what we are doing. This is called intermarket. Same month contract, different products like gold and silver, long gold, short silver. That's not what we are trying to do. This is called intermarket spread trading. 
That's not what we want. Another one is called inter-exchange spread. Means that, like for example, long the SGX SICOM rubber and short the Malaysia MCX rubber contract. So this is called inter-exchange. Same product, different exchange. That is also not what we are going to do today. It's called inter-exchange spread. So we have inter-market spread. We have inter-exchange spread. And then this is intra-market spread. That's what we are going to do today. Intra-market spread is example, calendar spread is a type of intra-market spread. Means that same product, different calendar months. Okay, different calendar months. Like for example, uh, June month is the blue color. Uh, September month is the brown color. Okay, they are not exactly the same. Okay, they are definitely, they might not even be co correlated, but they have some form of co-integration possible. And so if all these tests that I mentioned earlier prove that these two has a long-term relationship of co-integration, means they are like husband and wife, then you can actually apply this spread strategy to them. Okay, so you can see they might not be co correlated, but they can be co integrated. Okay, so that's how you can look at the months in your uh in your uh, platform like uh key uh TC Pro platform right KLCI FKLI or FCPO the June month and the July month. That's how you can look at the spread contract. Okay, near month is August, far month is for example December. So near month is always in front, far month is behind. Okay, so these are all the uh, some of the screenshots I, I got from Excel Learn at Print Screen. Yeah, that's how you can uh, you can actually go and find this YouTube to understand the basic of spread trading is all by Excel Learn in YouTube. You can go and find them. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the basic. I'm just going to share with you this strategy, this particular strategy. When you plot these two together using a formula, what you get is a residue. Okay, we call it the spread analysis, August, December spread analysis, for example, these two months. It can be any two months. Okay, so give an example these two months. The, the residue is after you plot the best fitting line, the distance between all the outlayers with the central line, that's called the residue. Okay, so look the residue spread code in MATLAB, run the code, this is what you get. What you get is actually two calendar month. All right, you will get something that look like this. It's called the residue plot. Okay, residue plot, okay, is where you can find opportunities to trade. Like for example, when it hit the 80% confidence level of negative 0 0.5, you can see that is the uh, item number 13, data number 13, data number 48, and data number 81 here. Three opportunity there where it hit below 80% confidence interval. Okay, that is where what you can do with it, you can actually long the near month and short the far month. Like for example, long August, short September, or long October, short November. You understand my, my idea? When it reached below here, the threshold, it crossed the threshold, that's where you can long the near month, short the far month. And then on the other way, if it goes up there and past the threshold on the upper side, like past the 0 0.5 and above, like there are three opportunities here, the data number 11, data number 31, and data number 42. You can see here, right? That if they were up here, that's where you can short the near month and long the far month. Like for example, short August, long September, or short November, long December. Okay, remember? Yeah, so if it's up there, short the near month. If it's down there, long the near month. You just remember it that way. Okay, that's how you can use this of this type of strategy. It's called the residue spread strategy. Okay, the opportunities total, you can find about five opportunities here where you have at least at least two ticks of profit at least two to five ticks of profit with 95 percent chance of success if it's 95 percent and if it's 80 percent confident interval means they are around 80 percent chance of success okay so fcpo okay september october month okay you can see for just now was august september month right you have five opportunity and you see september or october month you can see four opportunities here okay where you can get more than four five ticks profit all right and you just have to try to look at different months, different two months, look for their CADF value. And if it's good, then just do the month's spread. And the timing of entry is where the, for example, when you see that the data number 26 hit below here, right? The next day, the next day when the market open, enter the spread and hold for one day. Sometimes you only need to hold for one day. The max is hold for three days. You'll be able to get your two to five ticks. Uh, with that 95% chance of success, that is the that is the concept and the principle behind. Okay, so other than just the spread, you can also do the butterfly offset month versus set off month. Okay, which has uh, 
about negative 4.36. So it seems co-integrated. So this is the butterfly spread. Okay, whenever you see the below here is where you can long the near month uh, spread and short the far month spread. And then if it's up there, you can short the near month spread and long the far month spread. Okay, if this is too confusing for you, does not matter. Okay, just go to Excel Learn and understand what is spread trading. Then you will get the basic. Okay, right. So with all this testing, okay, right. How is the result? The next question is how is the result? With all these opportunities, hold for one day every time this happens, enter the next day uh, when you open, hold for one day, okay, and then uh, maximum you can hold is, uh, is two to four days, but you can see that if you hold for one day, the winning percentage is much higher if you were to hold more than three days, okay. If you hold for one day, the winning percentage is about 87%. So the testing with real money is that 70 trades over six months, average you have about 12 trades per month, doing different different calendar months uh, combination, you can win around 61 trades over 70 trades. Net profit is about 632 ticks, average about 0 0.0 is 105 ticks per month. That is a result uh, in the experiment that I did earlier. As I told you, I am not an FCPO specialist. I don't trade FCPO every day. I just conduct SPO experiment every now and then just to see whether my strategy also works on SCPO. Uh, I'm mainly an index trader, which I do uh, this machine learning trading on uh, uh, Nasdaq index and SMP and KLCI. Okay, that's my main, but I do do some experiment on SCPO once in a while. Okay, right. Can this be done for Malaysian stock? The answer is yes, in theory. Like for example, you measure the CADF on, let's say Maxis versus DG stock. Okay, at this certain point, DG is overbought, Maxis is oversold. That's where you should uh, uh, short, okay, short. DG and log Maxis, and at these certain points up here, Maxis is overbought and DG is oversold. That's where you should short Maxis and long DG. Of course, only uh, banks with uh, PDT, proprietary day trading, can actually do short of the stocks. Uh, normal retail cannot, but in theory, it works for stocks as well. But of course, because of the rules of uh, Busa rules that you cannot short stocks, so retail are not able to do it. The bank PDT department will be able to do this and earn on this. Okay, so that works on stocks as well, not just only on FCPO or FKI. Okay, right. And one very interesting thing is that is that uh, don't just uh, limit yourself to FCPO different calendar month spread. Also explore intermarket data analysis. Okay, it can be working like I explained earlier, right? Not just intra market, but also intermarket spread trading. This is more on intermarket, and you should be able to uh, see that. Uh, certain things are called integrated to FCPO, like soy oil, soy meal, and soy bean futures. Okay, so do explore, do explore, and see that who is leading who. Okay, not only spread trading, outright trading, you can also use this as a leading indicator. Like for example, soy bean futures, or soy bean meal futures, or soy bean oil futures as a leading indicator that leads FCPO. So this is one uh, test that I can share with you that can tell you who is leading who. This is called Granger causality test. Granger causality test, yeah, in the using e view. So if in the Granger causality test, if the probability is less than 0 0.05, means this thing is leading FCPO. So for example, you see here, the probability is less than 0 0.05. Soya bean does not Granger cause FCPO. It means that soya bean price is leading FCPO. And here, soy meal does not Granger cause FCPO. The the number probability p value is more than 0 0.05 means that soya meal, soy meal futures does not lead FCPO. And here, soy oil does lead FCPO. So you can find two linear indicators here already, which is soy bean futures and soy oil futures. So you can look at these two to trade FCPO, which is being led by it. So not only for spread trading, you can do intermarket analysis and one lead the other for outright trading of FCPO as well seeing how the others are performing and then trade the lagging. Look at the leading, trade the lagging is outright trading strategy other than spread trading, okay? And of course, you can do a modeling on that using Gutsch model or Arima models as well. So this is a Gutsch model. Uh, you can see from here from the model that it is very significant, okay? The probability that tells you that the volatility of FCPO can be partially modeled by the volatility of soya bean and soya bean oil futures. The impact on FCPO volatility is significant. This is besides the topic today, which is spread trading, but I want to show you that don't just think about uh, FCPO alone and the price at different calendar month. Think out of the box and look at intermarket data that can even 
double confirm and different dimension to actually lead FCTO. So I want you to open your mind and look at other data outside, maybe even Talian data of yellow beans or all these soya bean data which leads FCT. Okay, it's very important to open your mind up. Of course, next of all, last of all, other than this, uh, this this strategy, I think I came to the end of sharing with you a spread, uh, so called the the residue spread strategy. Next, last thing is to automation. This part actually I share in the previous topic already. That's not what today's topic is about. Yeah, so I'll just briefly go through that you can actually automate this whole strategy using the local broker like RFP. I'm not going to recommend any broker, but I'm just sharing with you. Some brokers allow automation, okay? They allow automation. You can do it in RFP, Yukata, okay? You can do it with, um, let's say, uh, Affin and some other brokers, okay? So you just have to, you can, let's say, if, if you're doing RFP, you can use quick screen trading, okay? Of course, I'm not recommending one broker. Different brokers have their own API vendor. You just have to ask them, how to automate this whole process but automation was the last topic not this topic so i'll just tell you these are the step by step how you can automate yeah so in the end this whole spread trading strategy can be automated using this way using automation method okay right so as i say okay uh you can also not just automate it and it's not just spread trading you can also use machine learning okay, algorithm on FCT as well. Again, it's not today's topic, it's something extra for you to explore because why? Today's purpose is to open your mind to explore new ways of trading FCTO. So not only you can manual trade, you can automate trading, not only you can do uh, outright trading, you can do spread trading, you can do intra spread, inter market spread, inter exchange spread, and you can also use machine learning, okay, like this to predict FCPO, okay? Like for example here, there's uh, this uh, machine learning is telling you that the uh, there's a uh, what is the probability of short the red color is only going down is twenty two percent, uh going sideways is twenty eight percent and going up is forty eight percent. All right, so that tells you that there is a chance of going up. Okay, so the case study here is that if the machine learning tells you there's a very high chance to go up, then the system can automate and actually long FKLI or FCPO or something like that. Okay, that is not today's topic, but I'm exploring telling you that well some other topics i might explore with you machine learning models okay right so uh does it really work okay let's look at the the machine learning volatility model using gutsch and arima right you can see that it, it actually tells you where to short and where to long you can short here long here short here long here short here that is part of quantitative modeling okay using gutsch and arima so long when the LSTM classification model reach a skew bias to short, the system will short. If you reach a strong bias to long, the system will long. So you can see here, the red color is very big value. When it reach 40, skew to 40, the system will actually make a short. FCPO, okay, the system, the, uh, the LSTM system make a short here and you actually take profit here. And that was a real trick that I did to experiment and tell you to prove that actually machine learning model can be applied to FCPO as well. So that was the trick done uh, quite recently. Just to just to uh, there was some a few like two weeks ago I think one or two weeks ago I performed this trick to prove that actually LSTM model which is the AlphaGo model they used to beat the chess master can be used to predict and to do FCPO outright trading as well not just spread okay so today I go slightly beyond spread but I don't want to go too far today's topic is mainly on how to do spread trading okay so I think that it's already nine thirty. I will end my topic today. I will leave some of the information for the next topics, let's say about machine learning, about AI and stuff like that, okay? So today we focus only on spread trading, especially on residue spread trading using a quantitative model, okay? So let's end with that, all right? And I'll pass the time back to the, 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 the administrator and we will continue with the Q&A session, okay? Let me pass back to you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Alex, uh, for your sharing. Uh, hold on and uh, let me put my slide up first. Now, for those of you who are uh, first time listening to uh, uh, spread trading, uh, if you you may seem a little bit confused a little bit, but it's okay. Uh, take your time to learn about it. And for those of you who are familiar with technical analysis or even fundamental analysis, but you have not uh, explored the area or domain of a quantitative analysis yet. So uh, this session might be a little bit uh, you takes it takes time for you to digest and it's okay uh, because you know uh, each and every uh, knowledge it takes time for us to slowly learn to acquire those skills now uh now we will be opening up for the q a session so if you have any questions 
uh, please only type your questions in the Q and A box and uh, make sure you send it to all co-hosts and I will be only be able to uh, grab your question in the Q and A box. So all you need to do is to follow these two steps, uh, find the Q and A uh, column and then click on it and make sure that it is uh, sent to all co-hosts and that's where you are able to type your question and uh, submit your question. Okay, so that I can uh, receive your questions. Uh, hold on a moment, let me check uh, for your questions. All right, uh, the first question, Alex, uh, can you uh, briefly explain uh, what is the uh, mean reversion? Oh, okay, mean reversion, as I say, is like no matter how far you pull the two price apart, like you pull a husband and wife apart, they will eventually come back to each other. You imagine that as mean reversion. So if the two data, let's say September contract and October contract, they are co-integrated, whether they care very far, they will eventually mean revert or means that they will pull back to each other. That is called mean reversion. Okay. Uh, next question uh, would be uh, how um, how is uh, the co-integrated different from a covariance? Oh, covariance is a different topic altogether. I think you can Google that. Uh, it will be a very long uh, answer to answer that. So please Google that. So today we are not going to talk about covariance at all. Just co-integration versus correlation. Right, we're talking about a husband and wife relationship here. Co-integration will be. Okay. Uh, next question would be, uh, is there any shortcut method to uh, determine if the price has any uh, mean reverting uh, properties? Okay, I'm sure there are shortcuts that I'm not aware of. So I just share with you one way of doing it as I share with you is through the MATLAB and you find the property. And of course, this whole process can be automated as well if you know Python programming and stuff like that or MATLAB programming. Uh, they might be, but I'm not sure. But that is one method I share with you is the method to think. I think they are short enough actually. Okay, uh, following up with the same uh, uh, said from the same question, uh, whether we can use the the you know, uh, based on our eyeball by looking at the chart by overlaying two charts together to look at whether there is a mean reversion uh, uh, properties. Yes, of course, uh, the old timers also called the locals, right, in uh, the specialists in FCPO, they are all using eyeballing, you know, for, for many years already. So they are very successful in trading uh, and detecting or judging whether they will mean reverse or not by just eyeballing. So without all these tools, the old timers can do it, but I think it takes years of practice. So these are more scientific tools to help you immediately able to do it. So that's the main difference. Uh, okay. Uh, next question, uh, does residual uh, spread strategy applicable to a product that is only having a uh, mean reverse, mean reverting properties market? I don't understand the question actually. Uh, well, what does that actually mean? I, I know what you read, but what does the question mean? Actually? Okay. Uh, whether it. does the residual, uh, earlier you sh uh, share about the residual uh, spread trading strategy, right? Whether does it uh, applicable to uh, mean reverting markets or trending markets? Okay. I think uh, the, um, the trending or not trending is not really relevant for traders who do spread trading because two calendar month can be trending together. So trending does not matter anymore. And if it's ranging market, both can be ranging together. So it also does not matter. So spread trading is very different from outright trading. I think this uh, person is uh, not very clear, but I might, I can answer is that uh, this strategy works on all sorts of products. Again, the quality of the co-integration, you need to measure using what I just shared earlier. If it, if the quality is there, means the CAD value is actually very negative, high enough, then it works on that product. You can try it on all sorts of products. Okay, so uh, the conclusion is it doesn't really matter whether is it a, a sideways market or even a trending market, correct? Okay, uh, next question. Um, in trading, does TradingView has any tools that uh, show the spread uh, between two contracts of uh, different expiry dates? Okay, the answer is I do not know because I'm not a very great user of TradingView even though I do TradingView, do use TradingView, but I did not find that function. Those of you who do, please let me know. I want to, I'm curious as well. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, where can we get the continuous uh, spread month uh, end of day data? Mm. 
continuous spread month end of day data i think as i said earlier you can get the data from a paid sites like busa station you can get from bloomberg uh, those free sites i'm not that sure whichever is uh reliable i'm not that sure because uh, on those free sites like investing.com only can get the outright data but not the spread data. Okay, so for those of you who want to get the data, you can get it from a Brusa station, uh, which you may need to pay some fee la, to get a more reliable data. Okay, now uh, next uh, question is that uh, for machine learning, uh, how do you deal with the uh, volatility that that you see is uh, in 2017, which is uh, different from uh, 2020 and 2021? Good question. Machine learning is basically, uh, as you can see from the AlphaGo uh, story, is that it's machine mapping patterns that human eyes cannot see. So if these patterns have never appeared before, means the crisis has never been included in the training data of the machine, the machine is not aware and the machine might not know what to do or it might make some mistakes. So machine is like a child. After it makes a few mistakes, it will learn from their mistakes on its own. Okay, so uh, the machine learning might not perform well if you give it, does not give it enough data that includes market prices. But if you have given it enough data, including market prices, to train the machine, it will be prepared for handling the crisis as well. So that is machine learning uh, on the more volatile or even crisis. Okay, another question is actually from uh, those who would like to uh, learn uh, what is machine learning. Okay, how can we learn uh, machine learning and uh, which website would be recommended to learn this kind of uh, machine learning? Okay, as you know that uh, AlphaGo or the, the technology behind AlphaGo is TensorFlow. It's actually by Google. Google has free education website on machine learning. So you just have to go to TensorFlow background. Okay, TensorFlow Play, sorry, not background, Playground. TensorFlowPlayground.com. That is a free site where Google educate the public on what is machine learning and how does machine learning detect patterns. You can go to that free website to learn more. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, um, do you... Uh, which platform do you suggest to do any uh, statistics reading for, for beginners? Okay, for beginners, I would say a uh, uh, statistics software that you can find it easy to use. Example is like eView, uh, MATLAB, uh, SPSS. These are all uh, very, very beginner software that you can actually learn from. I think MATLAB is good. Okay. Uh, following with the next question. Um, uh, which is the uh, strategy earlier, st strategy co-integrative strategy that you mentioned earlier. Uh, whenever a spread near zero, uh, can I long on the spread uh, when uh, whether there is uh, any correlation on quantitative methods? Okay, I think I will refer back to what I showed earlier. Uh, the residue plot will show you when is the right timing to long or short. So as long as it actually hit the, those threshold, like it, pass below the threshold, that is time to long the nearman short the farm man. If it pass above the threshold, is where you should short the nearman and long the farm man, right? So just follow that residue spread. So when the spread is zero or when there's not enough, you will not see the value past the threshold. Then that is not the time to trade. Okay, so it uh it, it you refer to in, refer to the residual value. Ah, uh, the right. residual plot. Okay. So the next question is uh, how do we determine the criteria to select uh two two securities for uh, mean reversion. This is more related to stocks. Okay. How do we uh, determine what are the criteria to select uh, two, uh, two stocks that has a mean reversion? Okay, of course, first is common sense. Uh, if the stocks are both in the same sector, like uh, Google and uh, Apple, both are technology stocks, okay, or Apple and Samsung, that is a higher chance of co-integration. That's from the common sense. Of course, you need to verify it with using the Johansson's test whether they are co-integrated or not. So which two stocks to find uh, is really up to what you are normally trading. If you really do not know, you can always start with big cap stocks like BAT, you know, uh, Alibaba, uh, Baidu, and you know, uh, Tencent, all those uh, China stocks or the US FANG stocks. You can start with those and slowly expand with your favorite stocks. All right. Uh, next question, uh, for the mean reversion, what would be the best uh, risk to return uh, ratio to trade? Okay, uh, for mean reversion, as I shared earlier, my method is that I will just hold for one day and the best is just one day. 
and not more than three days. So it's just holding. I don't have a stop loss because it's a spread trading. It's very different from the concept of outright where you need stop loss and take profit. Uh, mean reverse, uh, this spread trading, normally we don't put uh, take profit and we just hold and, and we just close when we hit my uh, so-called the uh, profit target, let's say five ticks. Of course, if you want to have a stop loss, you can do that as well. During my experiment, I just hold for uh, up to three days and close, okay? Or when you hit my profit, that was the experiment I did. Okay, so it's more on uh, no cut loss and uh, it is actually holding until the the, the residual spread is over. Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. More on timing, not so much on the cut loss one. All right. Uh, next question would be uh, same thing on the uh, for the spread trading. Uh, whether does uh, whether does uh, you know uh, need do we need to set a cut loss or or set the profit target for that? Well, of course, I think similar uh, to yeah, similar question. question. You can yeah. definitely set your own stop loss and, and take profit if that's your practice or habit. Definitely. Uh, okay. Uh, this is, I think, uh, a little bit more personal question for you. Uh, for from one of the participants, uh, do you employ this method in in uh in which which products that you trade, and what would be a general uh ROI for a typical year? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I say uh, I'm not able to disclose or whatever that I trade my, for my, first of all, I'm not allowed to trade. Yeah. I can only trade for my company and uh, officially my company, uh, trades ETF. As you know, that I work for a robot advisory, which we are launching our robot next month. So officially I only trade ETF. That is the right answer to give. <laughs> okay. So for, so for those of you who want to ask, uh, fund managers, whether do they trade for themselves or not, the answer is actually no, because, uh, what, what they are able to do is actually trade for the uh, company. Correct. Am I right? Alex? Yes. For R and D, I can do a lot of testing. Yeah. Like I can test on FCPO, but not on official fund management. We can't trade other things other than what we are supposed to trade. Yeah. That's the okay. difference between R and D and actual fund management. All right. Uh, next question is, uh, can this uh, co-integration work in a crypto market considering the volatility is extremely high? Yeah, again, as I say, uh, volatility or trending or all this does not matter. All we need to have is a co-integration property. That's all that matters. So if there are two, let's say Ethereum and Bitcoin are very well co-integrated, then why not? Even two altcoins are co-integrated, we can try uh, again, go back to the same test. Yeah, then you will see whether is it suitable. Okay, and uh, next question: What are the uh, major risk in uh, trading spread, uh, trading strategy? Using this, what are the risks when we use uh, trading spread strategy? Uh, I would say the risk, of course, is when the spread tear. Yeah, because you are expecting the spread to mean revert, ma. You long one and short the other. So if they tear further, you are definitely experiencing loss. That's the very risk. It's very different from outright trading. The spread tearing is actually the risk involved. Okay. Uh, next question, I think, is regarding to uh, earlier one of the uh, small topic that you shared on the uh, inter-market uh, spread. So given that there is a uh, two different uh, time for, for trading, for example, soybean, uh, soybean oil versus uh, FCBO, uh, how do we do uh, a spread trading for, for this kind of uh, inter-market spread? Good question. If the markets are of a different timing, like for example, Thailand markets opening and closing hour is different from uh, Busan derivatives market, uh, you're probably, you will be looking at something like not intraday trading spread, but rather holding over a week. Okay. So maybe you enter at different timing. Okay. But make sure you enter on the same day, but when the each different market open and hold over one week, that might work as well. But of course, again, you have to test out the strategy before you put in real money. All right. And next question, how do we avoid getting caught by a spread pairing? Or spread are there spread pairing? I don't know whether oh. it's, a, it's a, okay. a term used in that or not. Well, again, I will say uh, every time spread pair, uh, spread traders will suffer heavy losses. Sometimes up to 10 or 20% of their whole year's profit can loss in one pair. That is very real for FCPO traders. Okay, So I can see some of my local friends experience that. How to avoid that, I do not know. How to uh so called the way I avoid is I always make sure the integration properties and all my tests are met the criteria before I enter. That's one way I avoid bad signals or false signals. Uh, that's how I do it, lah. 
okay, since we are here in a little bit uh, jargon term, uh, on spread tearing, can you briefly explain to some uh, for for some of our audience what is uh, the, the spread tearing? Oh, okay. I think spread tearing is also mentioned in I think Excel learns uh, web uh, those are uh, videos in web in the YouTube. They can go and search. But a very very simple way of explaining is you actually the spread strategy is expect them to mean revert means they come back to each other because you long one and short the other. If they don't come back to each other, rather they go further and further and further away. Let's say the hus the wife never come back to the husband, she go and travel to Africa, to Europe and very, very far away. That's called spread tearing. And that is of trouble. Yeah. So you imagine that husband and wife, that will spell trouble. Okay. Uh, the next question would be in the event of a uh, spread tear, uh, tear, in which kind of event where uh, spread tearing could happen? Whether is it, uh, for example, uh, does it happen during a uh, last day of rollover? Okay, these questions are very too technical. I would say uh, I will not uh, give a very, very specific answer to that. I myself is not a specialist. Uh, definitely, I think it's related to fundamental. Yeah. Right. Well, because a uh, quantitative model is the assumption is that there is no fundamental change to the FCPO condition. Then quantitative model works in the normal days. Like that means not in the crisis and not during when there are some fundamental condition to uh, FCPO. Because FCPO is a commodity, com uh, fundamentals do matters, like seasons and stuff like that. Okay. So that may actually affect the spreads uh, uh, quality. Okay, uh, following up with the similar question, I think it's also a quite an uh, advanced uh, question, right? Uh, for, for the practitioner, uh, how frequent will we be uh, see spread, spread tearing happen? Is it monthly or is this only happening uh, once uh, a few years? Uh, I would think spread trading happens more and more often and the uh, FCPO bucket become more volatile as I understand from my specialist friend who only trade FCPO, the other specialist. So I think last year it happened one or twice and then this year I think it happened also once. So probably you're looking at about three to four times a year nowadays. Last time maybe it's only once a year or once every two years. Now it's becoming more volatile and more often. That is the statistics now. Okay. Uh, so does that mean a more uh, volatile market would have um, more frequency of uh, happening spread tearing? Mm, it seems that way, according to my friends who are specialists, it seems that way, yeah. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, do you s study or, or use seasonal patterns or any fundamental data to uh, trades to, to analyze on the spread trading? Good question. Like for example, if you use Arima modeling, right? If you if you are on quant, uh, Sarima seasonal Arima will handle into seasonality into it. So quantitative modeling, there are ways to put in seasonality as an input, quantitative input. Okay, but that's on an advanced topic. Uh, but okay, uh, seasons and uh fundamental definitely have an impact on things which are of commodities. Yeah, they are definitely affected by seasons. So that's important to take that into consideration when you trade. Okay, uh, 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 we are going to take hold, take a few more questions before we end the session. Uh, next question would be uh, uh, from a participant. I think it, it's something that we mentioned the answer already, but I would like to highlight out again. Uh, what is the stop loss strategy for mean reversion uh, strategy? Because sometimes uh, price could go far beyond the 90% confidence in level. Uh... The, I think the 90% confidence level, it just means that uh, it's a uh, 95% chance. That means 5% chance it will not uh, mean revert, right? So definitely there are 5% chance of uh, failure. So that if you want to control your risk, definitely that's more on the whole portfolio or the your account risk management already. Let's say, for example, every trade cannot exceed more than 2% of your total account or 5%, then stick to that rule. That will be your risk management rule. Uh, these rules are not related to the the spread strategy on its own, but these are your extra rules that you can implement. These are your real money, so you can ex you know use your own uh, common risk strategy that you're familiar with. Okay, so for those who, who want to use uh, spread trading as well, you need to follow back your own uh, existing uh, risk management rule. All right. Uh, uh, one more question: uh, Can quantitative analysis be done on trading view? Uh, since uh, TradingView has uh, some of the data available in that platform. Okay, uh, again, I say I'm not an expert in TradingView. I do not know how to do it. If there's a way to do it, please let me know. But I do not know how to do all this quantitative modeling in TradingView. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. 
Okay, uh, one, uh, one more last question. Uh, for those who are interested in, you know, doing a quantitative analysis work, what would be the uh, basic requirement or basic knowledge that uh, we need uh, in order to venture into this uh, area? Okay, if you're really interested in the, you know, basic of quantitative analysis, of course, first, there are many uh, online free sources that you can just uh, Google. Let's say you just Google out, uh, example, Google quantitative models uh, research paper on FCPO. You'll be able to see a lot of published paper on quantitative strategy on FCPO. Okay. If you're talking about professional certification, CFA is for fundamental, CMT is for technical, CQ, uh, CQF is for quantitative. Okay. Certified fund financial analyst CQF is the golden standard for quantitative analysis. Yeah. Okay. So it is uh, called a CQF uh, certified quantitative. Uh, financial analyst. Financial analyst. So for those who, of you who want to go uh, a more tariff uh, learning in quantitative analysis, you can go to uh, learn a, a more structured syllabus and learning from the CQF, correct? All right. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's, that's it. So I believe that we have already answered many of your questions. Uh, regarding on the, this topic today, and it's about the end of the webinar session. So before we end this session, I would like to take a, a minute of your time or two to fill out this uh, feedback form. Uh, you can scan this QR code, uh, type in this link, or find the link in the chat box below. And it only takes less than a minute for you to finish. And let us know what is your thoughts, comments, as well as your feedbacks, so that in the near future, we are able to improve on our site and give you greater value contents as well as learnings to help you to improve your trade uh, in uh, trading. And we'll, we'll also continue, uh, later on we will be continue with the remaining of our session. So it just only takes less than uh, one minute of your time uh, to fill uh, up this uh, feedback form. So uh, we will uh, take a quick one minute and then later on we will continue with our uh, session. About another 30 seconds to go. All right, time's up. So if you have already submitted your feedback, I thank you a lot. And uh, while well, for those of you who haven't finished yet, you can continue to finish it. And thanks for your participation in uh, giving us your feedback. And we will strive our best on our side to improve uh, in the next session. Now, as I've shared with you uh, earlier on in this session that, um, you know, this is a LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series. It's a series of topics that uh, where we will be sharing and conducting almost every Tuesday evening, same time from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. And there are lots of uh, content pack as well as uh, informative topics where you will be learning some practical knowledge about futures trading from our experienced speakers. So if you would like to join any sessions, you can scan this uh, QR code and register the topics that uh, you would like to attend. And once you scan the QR code, you will come to this page and there will be an event calendar. So if you would like to join the upcoming sessions, uh, you can find topics on the uh, Tuesday column. All right. And you can click on it and register yourself. And if you want to find out more topics in the upcoming months, so now that we are in July, if you find out, want to find out more topics in August, you can go to the upper right and uh, click on the following month, which is August, and then you can uh, search for more topics that you would like to attend. So all you need to do is find the, click on it on the next month. 
And uh, lastly, as I've shared with you already that, you know, this is the LLF online workshop. Uh, this is more a comprehensive workshop where we will be uh, sharing with you the step-by-step -step, uh, process where we will be guiding you how to kickstart to trade your first futures contract. And it's a detailed class where we will be covering from A to Z for our beginners. And it's only for those who are serious in trading futures. And every session, we will be only be limited to the first 50 online attendees. So only register if you are serious in uh, learning futures trading. Or even if uh, previously you may miss out the session, you can register as well. Okay, uh, because, you know, like earlier previous sessions, some of the, you know, participants where they like to attend, they would like to learn about uh, more in depth in futures, but they are unable to register it. So make sure that you are serious in wanting to learn how to trade futures, then only uh, you register, right? Don't take up uh, other people's slot. Now, uh, you can scan on the QR code and you will also come to the event calendar as well. All you need to do is go to find uh, Saturday as well as Sunday column. Uh, the LLF workshop is usually uh, will be held on Saturday and Sunday. And the time is either from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. or afternoon session 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And one last thing before we end this session, uh, let me introduce you to this Brusa Academy uh, website. Uh, this Busa Academy is a comprehensive one-stop e-learning platform where you can get all of the uh, information as well as uh, knowledge about stocks, futures, and any other products that uh, you can trade in Busa Malaysia. So all you need to do is to scan this QR code on your right here, or you can Google search Busa Academy and make sure you are able to find uh, this link. So inside this uh, Busa Academy website, you will be able to find a lot of uh, articles as well as uh, you know past videos, uh, Busa webinar videos um, from this website as well. Okay, and uh, spend some of your time going to this Busa Academy and uh, you know uh, improve your knowledge as well as uh, skills regarding uh, trading as well as uh, investing. Now, all right, uh, this comes to the end of our session today. Thanks to our Alex speaker. Our speaker, Alex, thanks, Alex, uh, for sharing his insights as well as uh, experience on quantitative modeling for FCPO and FKLI trading, spread trading strategies. And I thank you all for your participation. And I believe you have learned uh, lots of informative uh, knowledge as well as uh, broaden your perspective about different kinds of uh, trading method. It is not just only, you know, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. There are another domain which is called a quantitative analysis as well. All right. So uh, with that, I'm CY. So I wish you stay strong, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon next time. Good night and bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.